hello everyone. Today I have great pleasure to introduce our new member, Emily. Emily Hi. is artist and also a tattoo artist. She's based in Holland, in Eindhoven. Hi, Emily. It's great pleasure to have you in our group. Thank you. So, Emily, please uh, uh, let us know more about uh, your background, how you become an artist. Well, uh, the fun part is like in the beginning of my journey, I don't really viewed myself as an artist. I just viewed it as a form of self-expression. Um, I've always been into drawing, art, um, everything creative, actually. Um I always found it really hard to talk about myself and what's going on in my life and how to express myself in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I found real uh, um, like serenity and peace into creating art. And I found that that was the way how I wanted to express myself. Um, I've always been like a daydreamer, a visualizer. So to realize what I have in my head um, into lines, into words, into color has really helped me to like rediscover myself and discover myself in that sense. So that's actually how my whole art journey started. Like I never had the idea to start an Instagram. I never had the idea to... Um, share my art with a greater platform. It actually came by uh, some friends who told me, you know, go out there, you know, show what you're doing. Uh, a lot of people would like appreciate it. Maybe you can help people with expressing themselves and um, learning to rediscover themselves um, in the form of art. And that's actually how it, how it all started, like my whole journey as an artist. Like I... Um, I'm really happy that there were people in my life that really kind of like shoved me <laughs> in front of an audience. And um, I, I was kind of shy doing all of that because I didn't know what what it meant for me as a person um, mm. and how it would affect me to share such vulnerable parts of me with a greater audience. That's also a yeah. thing that um, really was the idea of do I really want to do that? Do I really want to kind of expose a part of my life to a greater audience? And in the end, I'm very happy that I've done something like that because you help people with that kind of experience and you kind of make them feel comfortable with like sharing parts of them to a greater audience. So I'm, I'm in the end, I'm really happy that I kind of put myself out there and um, became the artist I am nowadays. So, yeah. Your family, somebody was artist, or some of your friends were artists. So how did you actually find the idea? Okay, I want to create some art. Start for yourself and now for a broader audience too. Well, it's funny, actually. My mother is a lawyer and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And my uh, sister, she she's kind of into art, but she's more into the IT world. Mm -hmm. And I was actually the person, like, I, I didn't start with art. It was, I, like I said, it's an expression of myself. Um, I started with psychology. I actually studied psychology. I was always intrigued by the mind, by the behavioral patterns of people, by myself as well. I, I didn't quite know what kind of meaning I had in this world and who I was and why I did the things that I do or did. Um, so I always lived kind of in my own head. And um, I didn't really have any kind of example in my direct life, like my family um, or my friends, like, oh, you know, I could get great inspiration from that. Um, my mom was an inspiration, but in a different kind. She's she's very strong woman. And she when she has something in mind, she just goes for it. So in that sense, she was a great inspiration to just go for what you love. Mm -hmm. um, but my father, my father was an artist. Like he always drew cartoons from his own head. Oh. I remember he was um, drawing like Bugs Bunny for me. And I was like intrigued by it. I was like five years old. And I was like, wow, I want to do that someday. So I guess that's where I kind of got my um, my drive for touch, art. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, but my father unfortunately died when I was seven years old. Forever. So I don't really have like those 
memories of, you know, bigger memories of that. Mm. So the only thing that stuck by me is that he was a, a good artist. Um, and um, I guess I kind of inherited that, that from him. Um, but in that sense, it was a, a challenge for me to kind of discover my my own journey in that. So I didn't really directly have someone who taught me how to do it, what to do, but I kind of took myself on this journey and was like, okay, you know, there is inspiration, but like from the greater world, like Salvador Dali is a great inspiration for me. I love how he could just put his vis visualization into like realization is beautiful how he just puts his dream into the real world and he was a very big and still is a big inspiration for my art yeah how do you see now artists as an occupation it became harder especially with ai you know ai is um developing very fast and um I mean, it's a beautiful thing because you can actually kind of um, maybe, you know, put AI and your art together and see what happens, for example. But there's also a lot of artists who see it as a great danger for their profession. And I can see that part as well. So it's like a, a two-way thing. I, I love technology. Um, I love the development of technology, but I also see what it can do to many artists out there in the world who are more like traditional mm -hmm. uh, with their artwork. So it's like a, you know, where is the world going? But on the other hand, it's like, it's pretty cool, but pretty scary. So it's like, you don't really know where to put yourself in that sense. And, you know, it's great to see that uh, social media and the internet has gave us the platform to share our art and to meet new people and to, uh, share the same interests or new interests mm -hmm. so it's a new world let's say because I'm quite traditional myself I had to learn how to use procreate as a tattoo artist as well and as an artist um, in general so it's it's a two-way street for me like <laughs> I have like very great plans and visions with it and on the other hand it's like but what about the traditional art what about like yeah, you know, like the art that we're used to. What's going to happen with that? How is that going to look like in five years? So I guess it's also the mystery of it. You know, like yeah. you, you, you're you, just going to see what's going to happen. So Yeah, I think that that's uh, kind of the, the the way how people are seen, not only uh, in an art industry, but in any industry. They don't know how actually technology will impact their lives. But yeah, as you exactly. said, the, the, the mystery is over there. So yeah, we will handle it somehow. And uh, in terms of, uh, I'm curious, uh, you, you mentioned before you, you decided to share your vulnerability with uh, yeah. the, the broader audience. So can you be m more precise? What kind of emotions and what kind of thing you, you, you start to share with people? I had um, a turbulent life, especially my er early childhood, um, especially when it came to rediscovering myself and who I was I from nature I'm the kind of person who is more busy with someone else than my own self so if you would come to me with a problem or something is wrong with you naturally I just go there and like be uh, involved in in what is happening with you but I forget the whole process what is going on with myself so I just kind of lose myself and I never really stood, um, I never just stood there and like viewed myself and be like, what, but what's happening with me? You know, like I kind of tried to push all the shadow work that I had to do for myself in the spiritual sense. Um, and I just kept busy with like everything else around me. And that's kind of where I think around 2016, I kind of had a huge mental breakdown. I totally was lost because I never really stood with what I had to stand. I had to stop the time for a little bit. I had to 
realize, sit down with myself and ask myself questions. But I never did that. I never had time to really do that. Time really never had kind of mercy <laughs> on me. It just went on and I just rushed into it and just kind of lived. <laughs> but um, in 2016-17, I kind of realized I had to do some um, work on myself. I had to really... Um, dig deep into my childhood, into who I was, into why I'm here, what I am. Um, and that kind of started my journey. That kind of started like my expression in the sense of who am I? Why am I doing this? Um, how am I feeling? And in general, just the question, who am I, was a very hard one to answer for me. So um, to express myself in art, in that sense, was a was a great um, reveal for myself. It was a relief. I could see, I could see it for once in front of me because it's always in my head. I'm I'm a I'm a great thinker. <laughs> I think I overthink everything 50, 50 more times than the normal human. <laughs> so, so for me to kind of visualize it and realize it on canvas was a relief for me. And also kind of, I, I overwon something. I can see what's in my head for once instead of it just being cluttered and chaotic and, and, and just not knowing where, where the hell I am right now. <laughs> so that's also why I write a lot. If, if you can see here, like I write a lot on my uh, focus. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's not focusing, but I write a lot on my canvases and um it's it's a time where I just I don't even know what I'm writing, but it's the moment and I'm just mm -hmm. writing what I'm feeling. I'm writing where I am right now. And sometimes I don't even know what I wrote on my canvases anymore. And I think that's a beautiful, spontaneous moment where you don't really have to think. But, you know, it's a moment in time where you really needed to do that and where you finally could see what you were struggling with, but it's beautiful because it's art. So you can kind of just enjoy it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful that you started to discover more about uh, yourself by creating something for others as well. So yeah. in terms of the, the your artwork, uh, do you have some artworks which you would like to share with us, which are you particularly uh, proud of or you, you, you like from some reason and tell us why? Self-portrait is my favorite piece of myself because it's, I made this one in a time where I really kind of discovered myself and I was really proud of um, who I was, what I portrayed, where I was going, um, my path in life. Um, and that's why this portrait kind of brings me joy because it's like, the first time in my life where I kind of was like, you know, I'm on the right path and I am who I am. I, um, I can be proud of me. You know, I, this is, this is me and I'm an artist and I can do, um, what many others are doing as well. And I can be proud of that. I can just scream it out. Like, this is me, you know, and that's why the self portrait is kind of my, uh, it is my favorite piece and it is something that really, portrays who I am for me <laughs> not every everyone could like understand it but like for myself when I look at it I'm proud I know why I created it and it's yeah wonderful, it's kind wonderful. of that and yeah. uh, where the passion for tattoo is coming and how you combine those two artwork and tattoo um tattooing came to me like I always loved tattoos like I from childhood I always was like when I'm older I want to have tattoos myself and tattoos for myself uh, meant greater meaning and when I look at it it's also a part of me and um, when I'm older I can look back at them and be proud of what I've done and who I am. I actually wanted to give this to other people as well um, I had the question from friends like, hey, Emily, you know, we like your art, you know, I, I would like it on my arm. 
And I was like, on your arm, why? You know, like I, I didn't understand, I didn't make the connection. And um, then for a later period of time, I was like, you know, I would love to give something to people uh, that means a lot to them as well, because for myself, it, it is emotion or just something beautiful. It doesn't always have to have a, a greater meaning. And that's kind of how I rolled into the tattooing world. I wanted to give people um, something they could be proud of, something they, they could look at and be like, yes, that's me. I'm proud to show it off. I'm proud to be who I am. I'm proud of my story. Um, I'm just proud of how it looks. You know, I, I love to give that little piece of art to people and um, make them happy with it, actually. So that's how I started my tattooing journey. Okay. It, it's it was like one plus one for me it, it's mm -hmm. it's almost logic you know like i just i mean i love a canvas and mm -hmm. if you have a person as your canvas it's a great honor you know someone who can trust you with their skin and is like here here's my yeah, arm yeah. just yeah. do it and i'm like wow that's that's a great honor and i would love to give something for you that could um express themselves so nice. that's uh, that's very special. In terms of your daily routine, uh, uh, what kind of uh, challenges you are facing when you are creating art and how you overcome those challenges? Time is not my best. Um, I, can, I can get lost in time, in space, when I'm busy with something. I, I forget to drink sometimes. It, it could be that bad. I If I really feel passionate about what I'm doing, um, Time can be my great enemy. So when it comes to time management and juggling work um, and passion, um, I think for a lot of people, it's, it's very hard, especially when you have to finance your your life and you don't have like a, a support system and you have to work on the side, but you also have this great passion. It, it takes great discipline to juggle those two together so I guess for myself that's that was and sometimes still is the the great challenge here because you still have to live but you also want to pour your soul and your heart and your love into something you love so <laughs> it's kind of like the world against you <laughs> and time of course <laughs> so that's kind of what um what it is for me you know like I I try to time manage my time better and also take care of myself on the other hand and do what I like on the other hand so it's yeah I totally understand and it's <laughs> tough it's tough uh, to to be organized and the yeah. only person who is um, observing what you're doing is you so it's sometimes exactly. so hard. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, nice, nice. Uh, and in terms of uh, of your uh, plans or something you would like to to do in a, in a near future, because now we are on the end of this year and it's time to think yeah. about what we're gonna do next year. So, do you have any any plans for for the hmm. near future? Um, I just started my cozy tattoo studio. So um, for next year, I um, I see like my client base growing. So that's really where I'm going to pour my time and energy in. And of course, um, my art as well. Um, I would love to participate in an exhibition. Um, I've done two before uh one in tokyo as well i really enjoyed it with my friend minami so wow. if she's she's gonna listen to this thank you for that amazing experience um and i hope to do it uh, again uh, i've been to japan two times actually i i really love japan and i can totally understand why you're living there <laughs> <laughs> it's been okay. it's been Please always a dream next time. of mine yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, i love the people the culture um the way they appreciate art I um I was uh in in her university she studied arts in the University of Tokyo and um she's into photography art um and we kind of like merged our art together and we were um showing our art to to the uh, to the students and to also people it was like an open night so people could just like go in and and uh, enjoy the art pieces and 
people didn't know that I was the artist of the art that was hanging. And I could see them just looking at my art and like taking pictures and like asking questions. And I've never seen that perspective before. You know, when you post online, it's, you don't see how someone is looking at your art. I guess it's just like scrolling, you're looking and, you know, you realize, okay, that's cool. And you like, and you scroll further, but I've never seen this. This was a, a beautiful experience and I would love to talk to people about it and like uh, discover uh, the lives of other people and like kind of uh, connect to people in that way. And that was a very beautiful experience. And I would love to do that in 2024 and for the future as well. I just love uh, communicating uh, live uh, rather than the telephone or <laughs> the telephone. I sound so old, the phones and <laughs> <laughs> and and that stuff like um in person, i just love yeah, to see of course, yeah. yeah i just love to see human emotion just in real life and feel the energy of people in real life it's it's a totally different experience so i would love to do that more often and because this platform is also for the uh, young uh, unexperienced artists who are starting uh, their journey so do you yeah. have any, any advice for for all of them who are Still thinking, should I start? Should I give up? Should I do something or not? So do you have any advice for those people? Yes, I actually do. Um, and I go back to what I felt the first time for myself. Uh, don't compare your journey to anyone else's. Don't look, don't concentrate on how perfect it should be how it should look like for someone else. It should look good for your own self. You shouldn't do anything. You know, art is very personal. That's how I view it. It's very personal. It's a piece of you that you want to share with others, that you want to connect over with others. So please don't compare your journey or yourself or what you're doing with anyone else. Um, there's a lot out there online about how to start, how to do how to look like, how to be professional, how to, if you start putting yourself into that, and also for you, probably as a, a, you know, with your own podcast, there is so many rules about how to be and how to do and how many minutes and this and that, you know, it, it doesn't matter as long as you really have the pleasure of doing so, if you really have the love of doing so, it will manifest itself and the right audience will come towards you themselves. As long as you truly believe in what you're doing, you do it with all of your power in your heart, it's going to be fine. But don't compare yourself. There's too much, you know, the internet is nice, but it can also be not so nice with the overwhelming information that can come over you as some kind of wave. So just be true to yourself and what you stand for. And then everything else, without even really putting your energy into it, will just unfold. And that's what I think for young artists, they, um, that's also a part of me why I didn't start art school. You know, like um, in school, uh, in high school, actually, we had art, the subject art. And um, my teacher would tell me, you know, you... You have to create this and it should be like that. And it needs to have this in it. And it it already gave me 15 errors just looking at that stencil. I was like, I this is not art. You know, I had a lot of discussions with my art teachers. Like, I don't want to be taught how to make art. I don't want people to say how I should do it. It's just not my way. Everyone is free on how they like it, but I just don't like the way they want to teach me what art is. So I, th I think art is something personal. It's, it's yours. And if you feel that that's art, then that's art and it's yours. And that's many great artists do it this way. Um, and before, um, before there were probably many critics about, no, that's not art. And, you know, and that's why we have so many beautiful movements in history. That's why we have this and not one line. It's because there was a shock and then this period and again a shock and then again a period of just this is art, but then again a shocker. Like it does, this is how humans just work. It, yeah. And the shocker is from people who are like, fuck you. 
This is my art. Yeah. (laughs) This is art, and I believe in it. And that's how it just goes. It's, you know, just don't give a fuck, in other words. Uh, Emily, thank yeah. you so much for for sharing the part of your journey and uh, for uh, sharing thank the you. advice <laughs> for for the people in our platform and for all you guys who enjoy, please follow Emily on her uh, two uh, Instagram profile, which you can find uh, in the description. <laughs> and yeah. also, if you like this video, please be, feel free to share with the people who you might think might be inspired, sa- inspired same as we are. Emily, thank you so much and have a great uh, finish of this year and all the best in the next year too. Thank you. All the best for you too and thank you for having me. It was really nice.